And welcome back to yet another awesome arrangement lesson here on Lick and Riff, in which you're going to learn Piano Man by Billy Joel. It's a brilliant song, a brilliant composition. So first I'm going to play you the arrangement so you can see and hear how it goes, and then we're going to break it down note by note, lick by lick, with tabs right here on the screen as usual. It goes like this. Enjoy! <laughs> Okay, so Billy Joel being Billy Joel, the genius that he is, uh, this is in the key of C, but the harmony here is very, very rich. You still have all those open position chords that you'd expect from the key of C. Okay, C, F, G, A minor, but the richness comes from the different bass notes. So, for example, you're gonna play C over E at some point. You're gonna play F over A. A, you're gonna play D over F sharp. You're gonna play A minor over G. So, that's the brilliance of Billy Joel as a musician. A great musician can take a simple key, a C major, and turn it into something even more beautiful. So before we put on the first C chord, I want to remind you that there's a free workshop waiting for you on lickandref.com, okay, my website. So open a new tab, go to lickandref.com, and you will be able to immediately enroll into a free video series, a completely free guitar workshop, a full in-depth workshop designed to take your playability and your skills further than you ever thought possible because I'm gonna help you break free of all those confining misconceptions that the guitar world still has, unfortunately. So you can break free and unleash your creativity, your personal voice, your personal musical expression on this beautiful instrument and find your own style and the way that you want to play the guitar instead of always imitating other players and doing exactly what they do. So if you'd like me to help you break out and break free on the guitar and become a lot more flexible and creative in your playing, then go to lickandref.com and take the free workshop. Okay, you can start it right now, you can start it after the lesson, just open a new tab and enroll, and you'll be able to start right away whenever you want. It's completely free. So I'm looking forward to see inside. All right, so um, C, C major. Okay, I'm starting this with a solo. Okay, Billy Joel plays this piano solo, this blues jazz piano solo, so I did kind of the same thing. Um, now, normally I would improvise, but I also wrote down the solo uh, so I could teach you the solo that I played. It's a C chord, a simple C major chord, okay, and I arpeggiate it while palm muting. 
Okay? And you can do it slowly, you can do it fast, okay, or... Now, there are two options to express the ending. Okay? You can play the open E string and then three slide to five, pull off to three, okay? And then it sounds like this, okay? With the open E string. Or you can start with your little finger on three and slide it right away. Okay? It's two different expressions of the same solo, okay? with the open E string or without it. I prefer this over this because that extra E gives me an extra note in the arpeggio. And um, I don't know, something about it sounds a little bit um, a little bit more, you know, true to how this line should sound. Probably because if you put three on the first ring, you get this. Okay, you get a fifth interval instead of a third interval, which is a little less musical in this context. It's as if the solo is separate from the arpeggio, while if you play the open E string, it's a little bit more musical, thanks to that minor third, uh, major third, sorry, uh, that major third uh, interval. But again, I'm just talking about uh, an extra note. So uh, the next line is the cooler of the, uh, of the two lines. It's this. Okay, it starts from this with an extra chromaticism, and then it has this. So it's four, five, four, three. Hammer on, pull off, pull off. Okay, four, five, four, three. And then immediately you play five on the third, four on the second. Okay, you can, you can pull the string if you want, and then you play five and three. Okay, on the same two strings. Okay, so, and then immediately five pull off to three on the third. Okay, so it's, and then the second half of this line, okay, I divided it in two in the tab, so it's easier for you to memorize. Okay, that's the first half. The second half starts from five slide to three, pull off to one on the fourth. Okay, so it's, and then you have the same idea. Uh, sorry. Okay. It's uh, three on the fifth, three on the fourth, and then three on the fifth again, and one on the fourth. And you slide to two on the fourth. Now you can hammer on the two because there are two ways to play this line. If you're used to soloing, then put your little finger on five on the third string. If you're not used to soloing, you can hammer on the two on the fourth. Okay, hammer on, and then you have your first finger on the first fret of the second string, which is what I wrote in the tab. Okay, which is a C chord. Or you can play this. Okay, with that stretch, it looks a lot cooler than this, but it's the same note. It's exactly the same note. And then you have okay, two to three on the bass, or one, two, three if you want, or zero, one, two, three, and this, which is G flat 13. It's a G augmented chord. It's a jazz augmented chord because it also has the seventh. So it's important to have the first finger on the bass or the thumb, okay? The first finger or the thumb, okay, on the sixth string. Because you need four and four on strings two and three, and three on the fourth, okay? So you need all your fingers here, or the thumb, which is a bit more convenient, actually, because that way you don't stretch your tendons, okay? You, you just leave your hand Okay, your entire arm is straight instead of doing this. Um, that's why I prefer using the thumb. Okay, it's 
healthier for the hand. So that's the intro solo. Okay, or, and then. Or, okay, and then. Or. So. matter how you play it you can change the rhythm you can improvise over it okay you can yeah you can you can change the lines okay doesn't really matter as long as you're having fun okay you don't have to play my solo exactly um and then starts the uh chord progression okay just the intro chord progression which is c and then C sus4, okay, which is little finger on three on the fourth string, on the D string, and then take it off, back to C. So it's finger style. Um, I'm playing tin, ta ti ta tin, ta ti ta tin, okay, randomly with my fingers. Uh, I'm playing the chord and then ta 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 ta, just randomly out of the chord. It's an arpeggio anyway. I'm just playing strings uh, four three four or three two three. Okay, it really doesn't matter as long as you feel the rhythm, it's gonna sound right. Okay, so okay, we can just play two notes. Okay, as long as you play the chord on the beat, everything's gonna work out. Don't stress about the arpeggio. It really doesn't matter what you play in the arpeggio, as long as you have those chords on the beat. doesn't really matter. Don't stress about the arpeggios, the notes in between. It really doesn't matter. Hey, right? doesn't matter. Hey. Right? Just okay. Be comfortable. Don't overthink it. It's just an arpeggio. I know that many players like to think about every note in the chord that they're going to play, but trust me, you're the only one who cares. As long as you're, you know, playing the song, playing the music, nobody's going to know the difference between and this. Don't overcomplicate it. That's, that's my theory. Just keep it simple. Then you have this. Okay, it's F. I'm playing the whole chord. Okay, the open position F, not even the bar. And then I'm taking my fingers off. I leave the barring finger on one and one, and I play two on the D string. Okay, we have the open third now. This is now um, C over E. It's actually C sus over E, but but in sequence you don't hear it as a sus chord. You hear it as a C chord. Okay, so it's this. It's two on the fourth, and then you open that string, and then it's C over D. Okay, it's C over D. Now, you don't even have to play the first string, okay? But I just keep my finger on because I don't need to take it off, okay? There's no reason to change your hand position here, okay? So it's three, two, zero on the D string with your finger on one and one on strings one and two, that's it. You can even play it as a solo. Just leave the chord on play it as a solo and then it's C again and you repeat this experiment with it try different ways to play these chords now we have the verse and the chorus the verse and the chorus are pretty much the same thing you start um, it starts I want to say you start and it starts and I got you starts so you starts with a 
C chord with three on the first string. Okay, and that's the note. Okay, three times. And then you have G over B, which has the same note. So it's three and three on strings one and two, the open third string, and two on the fifth string. So it's... Okay, and then you have one below after zero on the first string. Then you have F, but you play it with the A string. So it's F over A. You have strings one, two, three, and five. Okay, right? so it's... And then the open E string. Then you have this. You have one and zero on strings two and three, and three on the bass on the E bass string. This is now C over G. So if you look at the bass notes of what's going on here, you actually have a scale. C, B, A, G. You have a scale. Okay, it's part of the C major scale. So uh, it continues, but um, I want to show you something. Even if you don't change the chord from F here, it still works, okay? You don't even have to take the finger off of the two of the third string, okay? So it's... You can play... You can play one and two out of the F chord and play G as your bass and it's still going to be C over G. It's just going to be C6 over G. So it's just C6 instead of G, but nobody's going to notice. Okay, listen to it. Again. Did you notice the difference? Would you have noticed? Hadn't I told you this? Okay, if I, if I didn't tell you that that I'm going to play two instead of zero on the third string. Would you even have thought that I was playing something different? That's the beauty about music. That's why you don't even have to pay attention to every note that you're playing. You just have to focus on the song because nobody else is going to notice. Nobody else is going to focus on those micromanaged notes that most guitarists bother themselves with. Okay, so just have fun with the song. You can arpeggiate. You can skip that pull off. Does it sound different? Yes. Is it better or worse? Who's to say? Now, the next line is F to C over E, just like in the intro. And it's the same. It's the same move. So, um, again, because this is finger style, you don't need the E strength, so you don't need to bar. You don't need to bar that first finger on the first, second strength. So you can just put one, two, and three on strengths two, three, and four, and you have F. So that's what you play. And then you play one, one again, or just once. Okay, we're not playing the lyrics, we're playing the outline of the melody. And then you play the C over E. Okay, which is one zero two on the same strength. Then one hammer onto three on the second string, and then you have D. Okay, so it's then you have G. Now what you do with that G is again your choice. You can just play the bass if you want. Okay, and turn it into this, which is G9. It's nice. If you like it, go for it. Um, then you have the same uh, C to C over G line. It's exactly the same. Okay, or makes no difference. And then you have F again. You play the one on the second string and then the chord. And then Okay, it's 0, 1 on the first string, and then you play G7, which is G with 1 on the first string. So all you need to do is to add the bass. And then you pull off, or you play the 
you play the second note as well. Okay, you can pick it, you can pull it off. And then, one one on the second string, back to C. And that's the verse and the chorus. It's exactly the same melody. So, C, G over B, F over A, C over G or C6 over G. Then F, C over E, D, G, any way you want to play it. And then C to C over G again. F, G7, and then C. Now you have the la 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 part. So it's, um, okay, you're in C. And this is voice leading. This is actually this is bass leading most of the, most of the time. So hey, you have F E D as well in there. So now you have C B A. So it's hey, it's two and zero on the fifth string, and you play. Hey, it's it's A minor, but um, two. To accentuate the melody, I'm not playing the second string. I'm playing the two zero on the fifth string, and I'm playing two and two on strings three and four. And then I play them again. Okay, you can just play the third string or both notes. Um, okay, strings three and four, both on two, and I play three on the bass. This is A over G. Okay, because it goes backwards again. And then it's zero one zero hammer on pull off on the second string. And then you have a choice. You can play D, okay? or you can play D over F sharp and keep the bass line going. Okay, two on the bass. Or the open D string. And then you have two on the third string. Okay? Or whichever sounds better to you, right? And then you have one on the bass. This is now D minor over F. You're not playing any chord. You're just playing the bass, but this is what's going on. Uh, and then you have, you have the A bass again. Two, two on the third, back to A minor over G. Okay, now this is, Technically, A7 over G, because G is the seventh of A. Yeah, if you play A7, you have G in there. So very, very technically, this is actually A7. Um, just thought you'd want to know. And then, right, then you have a hammer on a one on the second string, and then the open second string with D. So I'm just putting on two on the third string and I'm playing strings two, three, and four, okay? Both strings two and four are open. Or you can play it with F sharp on the bass again, okay? And then two on the third and then the open third string with a G chord. So I'm playing strings three, four, and six. F. I'm playing uh, the full F chord, okay, but I'm putting it on finger style style, um, which is two and three on strings three and four with uh, one on the bass with my thumb. You don't have to do this, okay? I'm just used to this. If you want, do it like this. If not, just put on the whole chord, uh, the bar chord, and then you have C over E, which is this. It looks like E minor. But in this context, it's C over E. It's, uh, you can put E minor on, but I prefer if you put C on in case you play the fifth string by mistake. So it's um, zero and two on strings, three and four, just like E minor with the open E bass string. So out of context, this is E minor, but it's not. So put on that C note, that three on the fifth string. So. So now it's 
G, F, C over E, and then this. It's G over D. It's weird, but that's what it is. It's the open second, third, and fourth strings, all of them. This is G over D. Um, because the bass line here goes G, F, E, D. Okay, the lower note should be D, but we are running out of notes here because this is a guitar. And arranging all of this in drop D just to have that last uh, low D note would be insane. It would uh, make everything so much more difficult. And this is in the key of C. So uh, I opted out, I opted against it. So this is the la 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 part. A minor, okay, or A. We don't know whether it is A or A minor because we're not playing the second string. But this is A minor in context. Over G, A, D, or D over F sharp. A, if you play this, you hear that it becomes minor, it becomes D minor over F. So, Um, A and A over G again, and then D, G, F, C over E, G over D, and you go download the tab, the tab is for free, the link is below in the description. Go have fun while you're there, go to lickandref.com and check out the free workshop or while you're there uh, downloading the tab, you can scroll down and see what I have in store for you there. So um, thank you for watching. Bye for now. Have fun and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. See you in the next lesson.